things we do for you YouTubers. So it's minus one today, it's about half eight in the morning and we're on a trek to find the abandoned shipwreck of RMS Molheim, which is just round the corner from Senan, which is just behind me, on the way on the coast path to Land's End. So join us as we venture in these sub-zero temperatures to show you the best rusty old shipwreck in all of Cornwall. So all the male viewers, I want you to ask yourself, would your missus get up at seven in the morning when it's minus two outside to come and look at an abandoned shipwreck in the middle of nowhere? If she wouldn't, then she's not like Vicky and she's an inferior partner. It's a bit of a treacherous path down folks, but we're gonna do our best. Okay, so we've just made it down almost to the wreck. Let's get across all this rusty metal and see if we can get onto the ship. Okay, so the path down is just behind me and I can safely say that if you're gonna come, maybe come in summer, because basically it's a small stream and not a path. Pretty difficult. There's now a obstacle course of rusted metal and I'm glad I had my tetanus shot when I was a kid. So, a short story of the demise of the RMS Mulheim. So this is Gamper Bay, which is situated between Senan and Land's End, about halfway between the two. About a 10 minute walk across the coastal path from Senan Harbour Car Park. Now in 2003, RMS Mulheim, what's left of it is behind me. It was going from Cork to Germany, I believe the town was called Lübeck. And on the 22nd of March, the captain, the guy that was in charge at the time of the boat, apparently he slipped over, banged his head and slipped into unconsciousness. By the time he woke up, the ship was careering towards Gamper Bay here. He didn't have time to stop it. And what you see behind me is what's left of a much larger ship. Now, the ship crashed. The shipping company deemed that it was a write-off. And the next few months, a stair, uh, I think it was like a escalator or a lift, a conveyor belt of some sort was placed up that treacherous cliff that we just climbed down. They managed to remove most of the cargo but what was left was left on the bay here and in October of 2003 the ship broke off into two parts. The uh, part behind me has stayed rusted and almost married to the rocks in the bay here and the rest of the ship I'm led to believe basically was given to the sea first thing you notice is that the rust of the last 18 years has basically turned a lot of this bay into this rusty orange colour. I've got rust dripping on me right now. I'm just underneath and wow, you can see all the underworkings of the boat there. Now it's a bit dodgy being underneath here but you can definitely see that the ship has been here 17 years and so it's, it's pretty much become one with the bay around here. I'm told that it does shift and move. Obviously it gets battered when the high tide comes. It gets battered by the storms in winter as well, so it does move a little bit. If anybody wants to put in the uh, comments below about whether they think that the ship has moved since they last came here, I believe this hole that I've entered through would have been the impact point of when the boat hit the rocks. I'll try and film it from the outside. I have to forgive my unsteadiness on my feet, but these rocks are a right workout. So I'm just going to attempt to make my way onto the ship. Not for the faint-hearted. Wow. The first thing you notice is the sheer angle that the ship is at. It's really disorientating to climb on. You can actually feel the, mo the boat moving, which is really weird. I'll be glad when I've made it up to this bit, I've got something to lean onto. 
Wow. It's so disorientating when you're on a 45 degree angle and the ship is actually moving, you can feel it. So this would be probably where the uh, captain was when it crashed, when he just woke up. I must say again, the most disorientating thing about this experience is the sheer angle that the ship's at. It really sort of uh, makes it really hard to climb. It's amazing to see what 17 or 18 years of just being exposed to the conditions of the coast here. Lots of winter storms, lots of tidal surges moving the boat slightly. And it's, uh, yeah, being here, you would think that this boat has been here a lot longer than 17 or 18 years. Well, at least I would. So from old pictures, it seems that this ship had a really nice blue paint job back in the day. Not now. It's all a deep rust orange. So disorientating, you can really feel gravity pushing down on you. It's a bit of a bit of a head spin because you feel like you're falling over all the time. If I can just show the horizon there, that shows you the angle that this boat is on. Whoa! Falling over close up the volley. Yeah, walking on this bit is pretty difficult. That shows you the angle that the ship's on again. Well, I can safely say it's a pretty unique experience. It's much bigger than I thought it would be. I saw it on the pictures, but now that I've come down here, it's a big, uh, it's a big wreck. And of course, this is probably only one third of what the size of the ship was, maybe even less. Okay, there's a door here, and it's so heavy. Hopefully I can show a bit of inside. Oh, that's heavy. Oh. Okay, so I thought I wouldn't come in, but I've been brave. I'm now inside the RMS Mulheim. Lots of broken electricals. Jesus. There you can see out to the bottom and the part that's broken off. Yeah. If anybody knows anything about boats and knows anything interesting please write in the comments yeah I'm literally this is me standing up straight now I don't know if you can tell but the angle that I'm on hopefully I'm not doing weird things with the light here it literally feels like someone is pushing me with all their might towards the rocks there Yeah, it really plays with like your sense of equilibrium, your sense of balance. An old sink there. Some tiles, an old sink. Maybe this was the kitchen where uh, the crew of the RMS Mulheim prepared their meals. Wow. Yeah, so I'm actually, because of my sense of balance has gone a little bit, 
I'm starting to feel a little bit sick. Not much experience of climbing on 45, 50 degree angles. Lots of insulation in the roof there. Vicky's got the door there. And if Vicky can't pull that door open, I may be staying in the RMS Mulheim for some time. Is that a thumbnail? If anyone can see? Okay, Vicky's gonna hold it open for me. Whoa. I'm out. It? Yeah. Oh. Would anybody else's missus come onto RMS Mulheim early in the morning in sub zero temperatures? I don't think so. I think Vicky's a trooper, aren't you, Vic? Look at that. No messing. Sherpa Vicky, as we call her. Right, I'm going to now definitely leave the RMS Mulheim for now and climb back up the stream stroke waterfall that doubles as a path out of here. Right on! They say surfing is a religion here in Cornwall, and that proves it. Has anyone ever seen a surfboard crucifix on a church before? Pretty cool. Anyway, thanks for watching me explore the shipwreck of RMS Mulheim. Please, if you like the video, please hit the like button, please share it with anyone you can, and most importantly, please subscribe, hit that bell button as well to get notifications of all the other places I explore in Cornwall. Thank you so much, and I'll see you soon. Right on.